The next item of business is a member's business debate on motion 2131 in the name of Miles Briggs on Edinburgh Waverley Station access arrangements. This debate will be concluded without any questions. Would those members who wish to speak in the debate please press the request to speak buttons now. I call on Miles Briggs to open the debate around seven minutes, please, Mr Briggs. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and can I thank you for the additional time um, you've given to allow my constituents to join us um, in the public gal gallery. Um, I thank colleagues from across the chamber who have supported my motion. I'd also like to thank the thousands of constituents across Edinburgh and Lothian and beyond who have signed my petition, either off or online. Both, I believe, has dem both of this has demonstrated the real public interest and anger surrounding this subject. I'd like to welcome to the public gallery a number of my constituents who've been campaigning on this issue, including Dennis and Pat Wilson, Ian McInnes and Moira Vaughan of the Edinburgh Access Panel, which has done such a huge amount of work on this issue, as well as representatives of RNIB and the Scottish Accessible Transport Alliance. All of us can agree that blind, disabled, infirm and elderly residents should have the same access to transport services as anyone else in Scotland. But sadly, since the taxi ranks were removed from within Waverley Station in 2014, many of these people feel they have become second-class citizens when it comes to accessing the station. Blind and disabled people who were used to some of the best drop-off and pick-up arrangements in the country feel they have been badly let down and that their independence has been totally undermined. Disabled constituents tell me that navigating their way around Waverley Station and trying to find lifts and escalators can be extremely difficult and frustrating and in some cases dangerous as escalators pose a particular challenge for guide dogs. I'm sorry to say that some disabled constituents have told me that they have decided to avoid Waverley Station altogether as they do not want to have to rely on the assistance of others. In many cases, it has only been because of the kindness of fellow Edinburgh residents and the city's fantastic taxi drivers that they have been able to access the station and get onto train services at all. Handicaps can be used by disabled travellers and Edinburgh users have told me that the services they currently provide are excellent but they've also told me that they have to book two weeks in advance, removing the option of more spontaneous travel. Perhaps after the week the transport ministers had, he'd prefer to know the movements of every, everyone in Scotland two weeks in advance. But however, the question I put to the minister today is why should the blind, disabled and elderly residents I represent across Lothian have to plan their travel arrangements two weeks in advance? And the current handicap service for drop-offs is facing being made less accessible in the future if this is moved to Carlton Road when the south ramp space is utilised for platform extensions. Disabled visitors to the capital are of course usually unaware of the handicap service. Many tourists coming to Edinburgh for the very first time have faced standing outside in all weathers on neighbouring streets waiting for taxis, often having struggled outside to Market Street or Princess Street with heavy luggage. Some have had to queue for long periods, especially during the festival, hardly creating a good impression of our capital city. I remain very concerned that the decisions to remove the taxi ranks in 2014 was implemented before adequate alternative arrangements were actually put in place. This is deeply regrettable. A committee of this parliament looked into this issue and called for action on better access provisions back in the summer of 2015, but we are still waiting for these to be delivered upon. I met with network, network Rail representatives and Waverley Station management at the station last week and they briefed me on their plans which were confirmed in the press on Monday for a new taxi rank at New Street Car Park. This is welcome news in as far as it goes but this will only offer a limited improvement for able-bodied travellers as it's just a taxi pickup rank and not one where passengers can be dropped off within the footprint of the station. This rank will also be considerably further away from the central parts of the station compared to previous ranks, so there will still be the real challenge for blind, disabled and infirm travellers who will need to use a number of lifts and stairs to get to their platforms and into the central concourse of the station. Therefore, I will be continuing to press rail bosses to look at additional and Im improved drop-off and pick-up arrangements and work with the Edinburgh Access Panel and other stakeholders to actually achieve this. Specifically, I hope that a north ramp option for taxis could be reconsidered in other way, as another way of getting deliveries into the station can be found and thus freeing up this area. And I urge Network Rail to explore all possibilities around this. The responsibility for ensuring a quality of access to transport services ultimately lies with this Scottish Government and this Transport Minister. 
There are questions to be answered as to why it's taken more than two years since taxi ranks were removed to come up with the limited proposals for a pickup rank at New Street, which will not be in place towards the end of next year. The Scottish Government should have been doing far more to ensure Waverley Station is made truly accessible for all travellers. Waverley is, after all, a strategic national transport hub, a gateway to Scotland, and one of the busiest stations in the whole country. The Transport Minister said fine words when he recently launched Scotland's first accessible travel framework, stating it's important for us to confirm the commitment to making it easier for those with a disability to travel. I agree. Deputy Presiding Officer, I know from the meetings I've had with the Transport Minister that he genuinely wants to see progress on these issues. I'll close by calling on the Minister to put these words into action on Waverley Station and press Network Rail to, further, to make further improvements that will make the station's drop-off and pick-up arrangements truly fit for purpose and genuinely accessible for all travellers, including blind, disabled and elderly residents. Thank you. Uh, may we have open speeches of around four minutes, please. And I call Neil Finlay to be followed by Gordon Lindhurst. Thanks very much, President Officer. And can I thank uh, Miles Briggs for bringing forward this debate and also apologise to him and, and yourself because I have to leave for the conveners meeting after my contribution. Um, I want to pay tribute to uh, uh, Ronnie Wilkes and, and Joanne Hutchinson, who are two campaigners who work to improve the rights of passengers. Joanne is a constituent of mine and a wheelchair user. Uh, Ronnie is blind, both are regular train users. Uh, they worked previously with uh, my colleague Sarah Boyack during her time in this parliament and I've been working with them over the last few months. And in September, we met with senior officials off ScotRail at Waverley Station to discuss a whole range of issues relating to disabled travel and access issues in and around Waverley Station. Of course, I think we have to recognise that if we were going to plan uh, and build um, the major railway station for the capital city. We would not build it where it is now at the bottom of a steep valley in between Princess Street and Market Street where access issues and layout restrictions hamper every move. Although, uh, as the old gag goes, it was really considerate of them to build the castle next to the railway station. So any uh, work at Waverley is challenged by its uh, geography. But that should not prevent us doing everything possible to improve access at the station for all passengers. So without doubt, there is a need for improved taxi uh, services and access to allow passengers to transit through the station and beyond to their destination. As a daily commuter, I find getting to and from platforms and dealing with platform changes frustrating and often very unclear for passengers with mobility problems using wheelchairs or with a visual impairment. This frustration must be even greater. So the taxi rank issue in the station is very important, but uh, Ronnie and Joanne have raised with me a host of other issues. They have suggested a possible further drop-off point uh, uh, on Calton Road. They've suggested simple things like putting a seat and braille panel at the help point in the station, changing the rail information, information desks to the rail information and access desk so that disabled tra uh, travellers know exactly where to get help and advice. Developing a passenger buddy system with volunteers to assist passengers who need help to access services, transit through the station or uh, get to a bus or taxi. Uh, we, they want to look at the use of uh, new IT and uh, phone apps to make the whole journey experience better, ensuring passenger, the passenger assist service in particular works as it should do. And I know that new uh, mobile phone apps are being trialled and look forward to their uh, rollout if successful. And they also just suggest having a scooter hire system, mobility scooter hire system at stations so that people with limited mobility can enjoy this great city just like everyone else. And there are a whole host of other suggestions that I won't go into at the moment. Um, if we think the last few weeks have been bad for passengers, then think how bad that experience of late trains, cancelled services, overcrowded carriages is for our disabled friends and relatives. President officer, I hope that the rail authorities can advance uh, the work of the group that's already set up and the suggestions that have come from my constituents. Uh, we all want to see a railway that is accessible for everyone in Scotland. Thank you. Gordon Linters, followed by Ash Denham. 
Deputy Presiding Officer, let me thank my colleague Miles Briggs for bringing this debate to the Scottish Parliament and let me also pay tribute to his efforts to ensure that taxis can once again enter Waverley Station. Um, he has eloquently set out the most important aspects of this issue. It is, of course, more than two years since public outcry when the taxis were stopped from entering the station. Now, I do welcome the announcement that taxis will be able to pick up passengers near the station again, but we're only halfway there. I'm unclear as to why Network Rail did not go the full way towards providing a full service to passengers to allow them to be dropped off as well. It is also disappointing to note the distance of the rank from the previous ranks in more central parts of the station, as has already been mentioned. Now, this is a vital service for many different people. Uh, as has been touched upon, taxi pickup and drop-off facilities are vitally important for disabled and elderly people. But let us also think of the tourists, some four million of them who visit Edinburgh every year, many of them using Waverley Station. I, as someone who has used rail services in many parts of Europe and other countries as well, um, understand the difficulty of someone arriving in a station and it can be quite confusing and unclear if things are not signposted. Some, some cities are better than others at providing. Edinburgh is a gateway to other parts of Scotland and 60% uh, of the visitors who come here travel on to other parts of the country. Taxis are key to making their journey easy and making the country accessible to them. Travelers often arrive, as I have myself in other cities, unsure about their whereabouts. This is why the position of the new rank is regrettable, around 500 meters from the station platforms. So I would encourage Network Rail to reconsider this and also to ensure that effective signage uh, is provided to guide travelers to where they need to go and signage that is easily understandable to those to whom English is not their native language. Finally, I'd like to mention the timing of the new proposals. As far as we know, the new rank will open in August, uh, sorry, in autumn 2017. And I think it would be good to have more specific information about this, as my understanding of that is that it will miss the Edinburgh festival season running in the main as it does throughout August. Now, if the rank is to open after August 2017, it will miss the 70th anniversary of the Edinburgh International Festival. That would be a crying shame. So on that point, I will close and I would ask the Transport Minister to see what he can do to try and accelerate the provision of what services can be prior to that date next year. Thank you. Ash Denham, followed by Alexander Stewart. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I um, extend my thanks also to Miles Briggs for bringing this motion to the Chamber and allowing us to explore this issue further. Edinburgh Waverley is obviously an important transport hub for people all across Scotland and beyond. It's got 18 platforms currently in use and sees about 30,000 passengers a day passing through. And with so many passengers going through the station each day, it's essential that there's full and easy access to and from the station each day for every passenger. Unfortunately, though, passengers with disabilities find manoeuvring Waverley Station's facilities to be a severe challenge at the best of times. Currently, additional help can be requested by phoning for assistance before you arrive at the station, but despite current schemes such as these to accommodate those that require additional assistance, many of these passengers still feel overlooked and often forgotten. And just by way of contextualising this, um, I'll just share something about um, the Paralympian Tani Gray Thompson. She highlighted her experience in 2012 of actually having to throw her wheelchair off a train because um, her booked assistants had not turned up and then having to crawl off um, the train just to get off at her station. And obviously that's not a good situation that you'd want anyone to be in. Recounting her experience to The Telegraph, she said that as a disabled person travelling, you always have that element of fear, feeling very uncomfortable, of panic, of just wondering whether or not you're going to get off. I think it's fair that a lot of disabled people feel like second-class passengers 
because they don't have the same treatment as everyone else. She says, I don't expect to be swept up into first class and treated better than anyone else. I expect to have the same experience, and that is often not the case. End of quotation. No one should feel the need to worry about accessibility. All passengers should have an easy and accessible experience at Waverley Station and indeed elsewhere in Scotland. Previously, passengers could be picked up and dropped off at platform level, but the closure of the indoor taxi rank in 2014 has only led to increased worry and inaccessibility for those that do struggle to travel. Passengers now face a time-consuming route in any direction through the station, in and out of lifts, in order to reach street level to get a taxi. And as we all know, lifts are sometimes subject to breaking down and this can cause extra delays. With the decrease in accessibility due to the taxi rank closure, the unease of disabled passengers has only increased. Originally developed and built in 1854, the station is historically significant. It does obviously have its geographical challenges, but that doesn't mean that there shouldn't be room for improvements. Um, this week, as we've heard, Network Rail have announced the intention for a new taxi rank to be situated in the New Street car park. And the design of this taxi rank is scheduled to be completed in May, but the project completion date, we believe, will be somewhat after that. However, this taxi rank will still require passengers with disabilities to navigate across the station and take lifts to New Street, and, as already been mentioned, will only be for pickups and not for drop-offs. Despite attempts to alleviate the stress of passengers, this new scheme, as far as I can see, doesn't do much to change the current status and levels of accessibility. Um, Neil Finlay, unfortunately, is not here, but he did um, raise several really good suggestions for improvements, which maybe could be taken forward. And I'd be the first to admit, as an able-bodied person, that sometimes um, we struggle to understand the challenges that are faced by passengers with disabilities. So I would suggest that the executives at Network Rail maybe even just spend a day on crutches with a couple of heavy suitcases or a day in a wheelchair navigating themselves around the station and getting on and off trains and going up to try and hail a taxi and wait outside in the cold to do so to get some perspective on this issue. I'm convinced that a solution could be found to make the station fit for the 21st century. So I would like to call on Network Rail to be more creative to find that solution and make the investment so that all passengers can use the station with ease. Thank you. The last of the open speeches is Alexander Stewart. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. May I start by congratulating my colleague, Miles Briggs, on securing this debate, and may I also commend him for the work of raising the profile of this issue surrounding access to Waverley Station here in Edinburgh. Waverley is Scotland's largest mainline station and is second only to London Waterloo in the United Kingdom. Uh, the annual real passenger usage uh, for 2014-15 was over 21 million. It is the very definition of a rail hub, connecting passengers from across Scotland and from across the United Kingdom. Such a station, which is of so much importance to us here in Edinburgh, should have and must have uh, an opportunity to ensure that commuters and visitors alike have an easy and accessible access to the venue. Accessibility is the essential part uh, of the process. A short time uh, decision and the ban that was taken back in 2014, uh, I do believe uh, was uh, uh, the wrong uh, decision to make at that stage, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, it, it really was short-sighted uh, in banning taxis from picking up and dropping off passengers within the station. Uh, and that has caused huge uh, uh, reactions for individuals who have to use it. And I do believe, as I said, it was a knee-jerk reaction and has had huge implications uh, as we move forward. As has been pointed out already in the debate, the withdrawal of the option uh, uh, has affected many elderly, disabled and infirm, and, but has also had massive consequences for mothers with prams and buggies and also individuals and groups that arrive at the station uh, find it very difficult uh, uh, to access. But just imagine, Deputy President Officer, if you're unfortunate enough to be visually impaired or blind uh, and would require the support of, of a guide dog. Uh, that could make a very simple uh, 
arrival at a station turn into what could currently be a nightmare for the individual. And uh, I'm not surprised uh, that many people have said that they will not use the facility uh, because they are fearful uh, and they are anxious uh, about getting to that situation. And that is something that we should be tackling uh, for these individuals. It's extremely disappointing that there is now no access for taxi ranks on the same level as the platforms and that passengers now have to make their way up uh, staircases uh, and inaccessible drop-off points to get a taxi. Uh, the current arrangements whereby passengers must locate at, uh, at lifts and escalators, uh, and as we've heard, some of these don't always work from time to time, uh, and that is just not good enough. Uh, while I welcome this uh, announcement by a network rail that the new taxi rank in New Street uh, is going to take place, uh, I, I, it's taken far too long for us to get to this point. Almost a year and a half ago, the Scottish Parliament Infrastructure and Capital Investment Committee indicated uh, that there should be a suitable located access taxi facility at Waverley Station. Even if we ignore the two-year uh, delay, uh, the rank at New Street will only partially support the situation and the problems that have arisen. It is proposed that the new taxi rank will only be for taxis that are picking up passengers, which means that for the, the problems highlighted remain and solved for the passengers who are returning to Edinburgh. I should therefore like to echo the calls made by others in the debate that the Scottish Government to fulfil its obligation to ensure equal access for transport services in the station. To conclude, Deputy Presiding Officer, the Scottish Government Network Rail must urgently work together to improve the access for Edinburgh Waverley Railway Station for passengers, but essentially for those who require extra assistance to ensure that it remains a, a real real hub and works for everybody in the community. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I call Hamza Yousaf to close this debate. Around seven minutes, please, Minister. Thank you, <coughs> Presiding Officer. Thank you, of course, to Miles Briggs for bringing this um, debate to the Scottish Parliament, a very important matter indeed. I want to welcome his constituents and campaigners that are in the public gallery and indeed any other uh, members, constituents uh, who are in the public gallery for what is uh, an absolutely important uh, debate for us uh, to have. I understand from what uh, Miles Briggs was saying that he had uh, recently met with the Waverley station manager, had a walk around uh, the station, a tour and given detailed information on the range of improvements that have been delivered by the ScotRail Alliance in partnership uh, with the Edinburgh Access Panel over the last couple of years. Let me just echo what I think almost every member uh, has said, the situation that we currently have is suboptimal. It's not, uh, uh, it's not appropriate uh, for, the, uh, for, for those with accessibility issues. Um, Miles Briggs was kind enough to quote uh, from our accessibility, accessible travel uh, framework, which I was delighted to launch uh, a couple of months ago, which confirmed our commitment to addressing accessibility issues across the different modes uh, of transport. So this is an issue that is of paramount importance uh, to the government and I believe from speaking to Network Rail importance uh, to them uh, as well. I'm going to try to address, if I may, some of the issues that have been raised. I think common themes that have come through a number of uh, discussions, uh, a number of the contributions that have been made. I think Ash Denham was absolutely correct that um, for those of us who are able uh, bodied at navigating through Waverley Station, particularly at peak times from one end of the station to, to the other, even that can be an uncomfortable experience. Uh, she's right to, to say, imagine that uh, if you if you are not uh, able bodied, uh, if you have a number of suitcases, luggage, uh, children, uh, whatever else uh, that you're having to, to to contend with. So I think there's some some important context uh, for all of us uh, to understand. Uh, there have been some. Uh, major access improvements uh, since uh, you know in 2012 uh, we know that uh, installed uh, escalator lift access to Princess Street and Market Street as part of the 130 million pound uh, investment uh, upgrade uh, but I recognize what Alexander Stewart was saying that we know that uh, lifts can break uh, and uh, that has been uh, so that's not a solution in itself but certainly it's fair to say there have been improvements that have been made uh, to access. What, what was missing from the contributions, and I hope to just add, I don't think you know, there was any uh, malice in this at all, but what was missing from some of the contributions that were made, which I, I think is important to highlight, is the reason why the taxi rank uh, was removed. I think Mr Stewart called it short-sighted or, 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 or a knee-jerk uh, reaction. Uh, I should say, having spoken to Network Rail, uh, this was because of a directive that came from the UK government in relation to counter-terror measures. And I think most people would I see that that's a fairly reasonable 
directive. Think about what happened at Glasgow Airport in terms of vehicles. Uh, we know if we travel at Glasgow Queen Street, Glasgow Central Station, uh, you know, there's not many stations that are bu as busy uh, as Waverley is that would allow taxis to come into the concourse of that uh, station. So uh, the reasons why that decision was taken, not because of cosmetic or aesthetic reasons uh, at all, but because of a directive from the UK government, which literally highlighted Waverley Station as one of the stations in the UK that had to make uh, this improvement. Now, government directives are, are, are best uh, not ignored, particularly uh, when they are to do with uh, counter-terror. So I think that context uh, is important. All that being said, all the members, I think, are entirely correct uh, to say that knowing that directive was coming, what suitable alternatives could have been put in place? Um, and you know, the, I want to congratulate uh, the work that the Edinburgh Access uh, Panel has done. I know they've been working closely with the ScotRail Alliance to uh, put uh, their case forward on what better can be done. Um, there have been some improvements that I've, I've, I've spoken about and, and the members have mentioned their contributions. Uh, I know Neil Finlay had to go, but uh, I would be interested in receiving uh, a copy of the suggestions that his constituents have made. If they've not been fed into the ScotRail Alliance, they should be, because I thought some of them uh, were eminently uh, sensible. Um, but uh, that close collaboration between the ScotRail Alliance and the Edinburgh uh, Access Panel has led to, 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 to that announcement that was made earlier this week, uh, which is uh, the, the uh, taxi rank, create, creating a taxi rank uh, within the new street car park. Uh, Gordon uh, Lindhurst asked, asked the question about uh, being picked up only and why was that the case? Because of insufficient space at the moment. Uh, but uh, what, I, what, what is the next stage moving forward? Uh, is that there will be detailed design work, uh, which will look at uh, timescales, which I know members uh, have mentioned, uh, but will also look at um, what more can be done to improve uh, accessibility. Now, once that detailed, uh, well, in just one second, once that detailed design work is done, that will be fed back to the Edinburgh Access Panel for their thoughts. Uh, but of course, I'll happily give way to Mr. Briggs. Myers Briggs. I have listened to what he's had to say and I'm grateful, but one of the key issues which I've been trying to press on this, that all the options which have come forward are not really taking into account disabled and blind people going through that station. They are being kept out of the station. Now, I obviously spoke about handicaps and the role they have to play. They are soon going to be also excluded from the station. So really what I want to see is how we do a bespoke opportunity for people who are disabled and blind accessing these train services. I'd like to potentially invite the Minister to do a visit with me and all the representatives who have an interest in this so we're able actually to say to Network Rail and to the station management that this isn't good enough. We actually have to go further and the plans which have already been put in place and which we are now having to wait another year for Actually, they look at that again, because I think there is an opportunity to really allow disabled and vulnerable people the opportunity to get into the station far better than they currently are. Hamza Youssef. Of course, I'd have no uh, hesitation in meeting with uh, Miles Briggs, uh, his constituents, uh, the access panel, or anybody else to discuss this uh, matter. I would just stress again, uh, getting direct access right into the station uh, might be difficult because of that directive from the UK government. If there can be a conversation uh, around that, uh, if there can be a way that that can be worked around, considering the space constraints, I think Neil Findlay it was that said you wouldn't choose to build that train station again if you had the chance uh, where it is. So there are space constraints uh, and restrictions, but I'd be more than happy uh, to meet with them. I know that this detailed design work that's been taken forward by uh, by Network Rail uh, will be in conjunction with the access panel. They'll be able to feed in on a regular basis. And that goes to the point that I wanted to make, uh, that Gordon Lindhurst, Lindhurst made, I thought, very well, that um, can this time scale uh, be expedited in terms of the, the, the course of the festival, such an important occasion and event. Uh, I will certainly ask Network Rail if that is possible. Uh, I think the design phase will set out the time scales, but he makes a very valid point um, about uh, that work taking place uh, at a time uh, that is so important uh, to this city. So, uh, in, in conclusion, uh, Presiding Officer, I want to thank Miles Briggs for bringing this debate to the panel. I want to thank the Edinburgh Access Panel, RNIB, and the many other stakeholders who have been involved. Uh, there is a route forward that will go some way to addressing some of the issues. Uh, clearly, there are more issues that need to be addressed. I'll meet with Miles Briggs and anybody else who's interested. Uh, and uh, as I say, I'll ensure that Network Rail continue to be engaged and that we could hopefully find a solution uh, that is optimal. Uh, for everybody, able body, uh, and of course those with disabilities too. That concludes members' business for today, and I suspend this meeting until 2:30 p.m. <laughs>